Very good. Will the meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission for Wednesday, March 20th, 2019, please come to order. For the benefit of those who may not have participated in a Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, our procedures are as follows. One, the secretary will read the legal call of the meeting as published in the local newspapers. Two, the applicant will be invited to come forward and present the case, explaining to the commission and others present what is being requested of this property. Comments of town agencies will be read for each application if there are any. There will be clarifying questions from the commissioners. There will then be the opportunity for clarifying questions from the audience. First, those who wish to support the application may come forward, and second, those who oppose the application will then be invited to come forward. As this is a public hearing, it must be recorded. It is necessary for speakers to identify themselves, state their name and address before addressing the commission. Four, the applicant is then free to leave or remain for the balance of the public hearing and the regular meeting, at which time the commission will try to reach a decision on each application. Each applicant will be notified in writing as to the decision of this commission and has the right to appeal to superior court if desired. Five decisions of this meeting are available the day after the meeting by calling the Planning and Zoning Office at 453-8039 after 9 a.m. Seated this evening are everyone. Um, Matt Yerzinski, Richard Wallace, I'm Philip Johnson, Alan Brown, Michael Basso, Jason Marchi, and Scott Edmund. Staff President are George Crawl and Aaron Mannix. Our videographer is Peter Schultze. The Secretary will now read the legal notice. Notice is hereby given that the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on March 20th, 2019 at 7.30 p.m. at the location being the Nathaniel B. Green Community Center, 32 Church Street, Guilford, Connecticut, in the Mononcatunk Room on the second floor for the following purposes. Robert Mangino, Boston Post Road, Map 84, Lots 11-1, 11 11-2, and 11-4. Request from zoning change from R5 to TS2. James Goodman, 86 Middle Road, Map 80, Lot 37, Zone R3. Special permit modification for keeping of 15 additional pheasants. William Freeman and Alicia Dolce, 301 Old Whitfield Street, Map 33, Lot 25, Zone R3. Special permit accessory apartment. Copies of these applications are available for inspection in the Office of the Planning and Zoning Commission, Town Hall South, 50 Boston Street, Guilford, Connecticut. At this hearing, persons may attend and be heard, and written communication will be received. Dated this 5th day of March, 2017, Philip Johnson, Chairman. A hey, um, couple of housekeeping items for folks that are here. Um, the application for Robert Mangino, uh, has been requested to be continued to the 17th. Um, so if anybody's here for the zoning change on that, um, just wanted to let you know you're welcome to stay, but uh, we'll, we'll, we will be. 17th, April. April, correct. Uh, the other item, um, which I will actually bring for a vote, uh, is to move the Town of Guilford Park and Recreation application of Chaston Island. There was some question with respect to the signage that was posted. Uh, as well as some legal clarification uh, with respect to the definition of structures and what is and what is not allowed uh, on the property. So um, to make sure we got it right, we're going to take an extra week, an extra two weeks, uh, and we will hear that on the 3rd of April. Uh, last item uh, is that the site plan for Alan D'Antonio has been withdrawn. Uh, so if anybody's here for that, um, Again, it's been withdrawn. So, that being said, um, I am going to ask that someone make a motion to move Town of Guilford Park and Recreation Department, Chatfitch Island Road, Map 23, Lot 5, R6, Coastal Area Management, and Site Plan request from this evening to April 3rd. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Move to the third. Um, I'm also going to make a request that we tackle the William Freeman and Alice Dolce application, and then we will go straight to the Goodman application. So, we did not. We should. Um, I move to move the reference to four seventeen point nine. Second. Discussion. Is there any, why are we delaying this? The Mangino. At their request. They have papers and proper notification. 
by neighbors within 500 feet of the property boundary. Um, Not just the budding neighbors? Correct. Thank you. So, um, I have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, William Freeman and Alicia Dolce. Dolce? Sorry if I butchered that. I got the Freeman part right. I think. <laughs> if you could come up and state your name and address for the record, that'd be terrific. Good evening. My name is Bill Freeman. I live at 301 on Whitfield Street in Guilford, Connecticut. And thank you for receiving my application for a special permit for an accessory apartment. And if you have any questions uh, about the application, I can do my best to answer them. But I think it's, it's pretty straightforward. So I don't know if you, what else um, you. Could you just give us some of the specs on it? Uh, it's a new house that was built on Old Whitfield Street on, uh, next to the uh, train station, kind of in, in between those two spots. Um, it's a passive house. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's built to that standard, so it's a very energy efficient house. It's zero energy. And um, when I was going through the process of, of building it, I was going to make a ga big game room, and then I spoke to, um, I think it was the engineer maybe, who said that they now had changed the regulations to encourage accessory apartments. And it seemed like a good idea. We had the space. We had the extra uh, room above the garage, and we went forward and got a zoning variance, and then subsequently are now in front of you for the special permit portion of it. Terrific. Um, I assume that we've got some comments. Yes. For clarification, the square footage of the apartment is within 35 percent of the dwelling area of the house, so it does comply with all of the criteria in the zone. You have a memo from the Director of Health on this application. Yes. Go for it. This is dated today, March 20th, 2019, from Dennis Johnson, Director of Health. Subject, Freeman, William, and Dolce, Alicia, 301, Old Whitfield Street, Map 33, Lot 25. The applicant's proposed apartment addition will, will result in an increase in wastewater design flow for the septic system currently existing on site. Adequate reserve area exists on site to allow for expansion of the existing septic system to accommodate the department. It is the recommendation that this applicant's proposed special permit by, be approved with the following condition. The septic system shall be expanded to accommodate multifamily wastewater design flow prior to occupancy of the apartment. I had previously spoken with Dennis and, and fully aware of it. Of this? Um, I have not seen a copy of it, but I'd be glad to take it. Yes, it's a three-car garage. Um, this is a, that's the second floor. Yeah, uh, I'm, floor plan. I'm looking at it. Uh, it looks like the only access to the apartment is through the residence itself. Is that no, correct? there's a stairwell that goes up from the garage. Oh, got it. Okay, thank you. Got it. Um, I assume it checks all the, the required boxes. Yes. Um, all right. Okay. Any so clarifying? Except for the septic. <laughs> yeah, except for the septic. <laughs> that and box is a big one. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, was a, it was a variance grant, but on the uh, yes, lot size. Yes. Size. Okay. Any clarifying questions from commissioners? Would anyone in the audience like to ask any questions of the applicant? Would anyone like to speak in favor? Would anyone like to speak against? Okay. Yeah. Um, I guess we can kind of go around the. Okay. I'll, I'd make a motion with. Uh, I think that one that makes sense to me. I think it's pretty straightforward. Just do a quick straw poll and make a vote. Everyone pretty good with that? I'll second. I'll second. I'm fighting it out now. Okay. Um, discussion. I think this is the kind of thing that, that you know we agreed when we put in the 
regulations for two public hearings that it was very obvious and, and straightforward and staff was in agreement um, that we could waive the second public hearing. Including the neighbors. Um, so with that being said, would someone like to make a motion? I'll make the motion to waive the second public hearing. Okay. For, uh, okay. Seven. Discussion? Seven. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Sure. Or do we have to wait till deliberation? Make a motion to close? Someone? I'll make a motion to close the public hearing on this. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, proposed motion for Freeman voted the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission approve a special permit application for an accessory apartment for William Freeman and Alicia Dolce, 301 Old Whitfield Street, Map 33, Lot 25. I know. Okay. Yes. We're, I mean, I, I, do you guys mind if we vote on this one and then? Oh. Okay. So, which one are we voting on? Right now we're voting on Freeman, okay? So, let me start that again. Voted that the Planning and Zoning Commission approve a special permit application for an accessory apartment for William Freeman and Alicia Dolce, 301 Old Whitfield Street, Map 33, Lot 25, as shown on the application dated 1-24-2019. This application is approved with the following conditions. Prior to the occupancy of the apartment, the septic system shall be expanded in accordance with the Director of Health's memo dated March 20th, 2019. This application is approved based upon a finding that with the variance granted, it conforms with the zoning code. Special permit is effective on March 29, 2019 upon filing with the town clerk. Second. Somebody else other than the chairman should make the motion reality. Okay, we'll do that next time. <laughs> I'll make a motion. Oh. With a second? You got it? Second. Yeah. All right. Discussion? No? All in favor? Uh, thank you. I'd just like to add that I think that's a really um, excellent uh, thing that you put into your code to allow for accessory apartments in the lower in the areas where they're appropriate. Thank you. You bet. Yeah. Okay. Um, James Goodman, 86 Middle Road, map 80, lot 37, zone R3, special permit modification for the keeping of 15 additional pheasants. This is the first of two scheduled hearings, but I'll let you read off. Hopefully. On. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully we can wrap this up. It's been a long one. All right, I'm James Goodman, 86 Middle Road. And I would like to start with thanking you all for granting me the special permit last fall. With that permission and the guidance and suggestions from Aaron Mannix, Kevin McGee, and Dennis Johnson, I was able to rebuild my aviaries in a way that is in compliance with town ordinances, eliminates any threats posed to both my neighbors and the local watershed, and provide better, healthier living conditions for my birds. All is good. At the suggestion of Peter Perkins at the Agricultural Commission, I asked the Connecticut State Agricultural Department to test all 31 of my birds for Salmonella pilarum and avian flu, as well as provide an evaluation of my best husbandry practices. You would ask that I follow those. All the blood tests came back negative, and I passed the evaluation and have followed their suggestions to move a debris pile farther away from the areas, aviaries and start composting any carcasses that happen during this project. The Guilford Agricultural Commission had the opportunity to visit my property after the aviaries had been rebuilt, but were still housing my entire flock of 31 birds and witnessed the bird's health and searched for any potential threat to my neighbors and or the watershed passing by my property. They found that my existing aviaries are sufficient in size and number to suitably house my entire flock and have sent you their recommendations that I be allowed to bring home my remaining birds. I thank you for your consideration. Um, clarifying questions from commissioners? I, um, 
I'm assuming that um, we'll hear from neighbors as well. Yeah. Um, and I guess my, my question is, um, is it your feeling that the recommendation of the Agricultural Society from our original special permit should not be followed? And do you have anything from the Agricultural Commission stating that they believe that additional birds are appropriate and... I thought that I was under the impression that they had sent you. I haven't seen it. Peter Perkins. Okay. Someone want to, Scott, you want to read it? Sure. Uh, this is a memo from Peter Perkins, the chair of the Guilford Agricultural Commission. Um, are this special permit. The Guilford Agricultural Commission at its November 19, 2018 meeting received a request from James Goodman of 86 Middle Road stating that he would like to amend his special permit from the Planning and Zoning Commission to increase the number of pheasants allowed on the property from 16 to 31. The commission held a special walk meeting on December 9, 2018 to view how the pheasants are cared for and the site conditions. Uh, the commissioners found the pheasants to be well taken care of as far as water structures, cleanliness, and food. They observed no evidence of the pheasants being mistreated. The commission received additional information regarding the keeping of pheasants at their December 12, 2018 and January 28, 2019 meetings. Uh, the information included the testing of the pheasants for Salmonella polorum typhoid and Microtitter agulinate and an inspection report from the Department of Agriculture. Uh, copies of the meeting minutes are attached. At the January 28, 2019 meeting, the Commission approved a motion to the Planning and Zoning Commission that no more than 31 pheasants be allowed on the property of James Goodman, 86 Middle Road, Guilford, Connecticut. This number is based on the number of pheasants observed at the property on December 9, 2018. Uh, the conditions observed during that meeting, site meeting and the best practice, best management practices being utilized. So as of the meeting, so as of the, let's see. So did you get down to 16 birds? Or? Yeah. Okay. Um, my data compliance with the, for the bringing everything for the original special permit was Christmas Day. Okay. So they came through, it was a couple of weeks before that. The aviaries had been rebuilt all the flashing visors added, but uh, at that point, I still had all 31 birds there. Aaron Mannix came up uh, the day after Christmas, might have been two days after Christmas, to just do a whole walkthrough, do a head count, check. They're not all easy that. to count. Huh? They're not easy to count, I bet. I'm curious. Not to throw her under the bus. She missed the count. <laughs> I'm, I'm just curious as to our, our original discussion about this was the number of birds uh, and some people's fears of commercial use of the property versus pets. So uh, I'm just curious as to why so many birds are needed or wanted on, on a, such a small property. It's a want. It's, it's not a need. But you know, we had the birds. You know, Half of them have names, half don't because... There's only so many good bird names available. Um, these birds are smaller than pigeons. It's, you know, the, the total body mass weight of them is less than six chickens. You know, and it, it's not like you know having a dozen dogs in the backyard. They're a good, quiet bird. So, so you know, they really down to 15 now? 16. 16? Yeah, that was the original special permit. It was for 15. 16. I'm looking for to bring my other 15 birds home. Totaling, so we'd have a total of 31. This is just for the birds, the aviaries. Um, Kevin had found online that uh, best practice for attending to the pheasants is 20 square foot per bird and the aviaries that I that are existing and in compliance are more than sufficient to house the whole flock and yeah. be within if these birds are like uh, chickens uh, do they have is there a rooster is there a male bird version of the bird that will make more eggs and you know yeah or impregnate <laughs> <laughs> they don't make it. 
Yeah, and that's, that's how we ended up with the birds that we had. It's, um, you know, incubating the eggs that we got from, we originally had just a few mm -hmm. of the golden pheasants. Additional clarifying questions from mm -hmm. Now, you do not have the 31 there now. You have 16. I have 16. Off, yeah. You have 15 off-site. Right. Aaron, approximately how many square feet are the aviaries? Each. Did you read that memo from the cab from the Peter Perkins? Yeah. Did you already read that? Mm -hmm. How did you get from, six, from 30 uh, down to 16? Did you sell them? No, I have them stored elsewhere. Are they Guilford or another town? Yeah, they're Guilford. How far away from where you where you are now? Enough where I can't walk there. <laughs> uh, I'd like to bring I'd like to bring the rest of the flock home. You know, it'd be simpler to tend to them. It's you know, and it really it's not posing a, <clears throat> and it does they don't pose an additional threat to anything. All the aviaries have been flashed so that no groundwater can get in and wash any waste into the the drainage system, the ditches and rivers and streams around there. Um, to answer your question, we have one 11.8 um, diameter poop, which is about 109 square feet. We have two that are 189 square feet and one that is 182 square feet. What's the life expectancy for a bird? Um, 10 bird or 10 years, I believe. The original special permit was uh, had a 10 year deadline on that. And I would assume that if this approved, it would you know, be at the same date. Kevin, or are we relying on what we had from a year ago? No, it was like six months and change, last September. Okay. Uh, that was that was the letter from um, the Ag Commission. Correct. Right. That's all I have in our packet. Are there any clarifying questions from the audience? Questions? Uh, I do. I have one. Sure. Would you step up and state your name and address for the record, please? <coughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, you shouldn't ask. My name is Herb Burstein. I live at 98 Lakeside Drive. I have two questions based upon what's, well, one, based upon what has been said. Uh, Chair, you referenced two scheduled public hearings. I was under the impression that the second hearing was at the option of the commission. Is that in error? The, the um, commission has the option to waive the pu second public that hearing with the supermajority. Yeah, yeah. Is that yet to be determined tonight whether you waive it or proceed with it? Yes, that we, yet have, to we have be not yet determined. Okay, that's the first one. The second is really a point of information. Just make it easier for me later on when I bore you. Um, the application as it uh, as of, I think, uh, this afternoon, early this afternoon, referenced pheasants. Didn't reference golden pheasants. Is it perfectly clear that we're talking about golden pheasants tonight and not, as the application suggests, pheasants? No. If I may intercede. Well, someone should answer yeah. that. Um, I there's uh, five silver pheasants that are part of this. So when the agricultural department came up with the 20 square foot per bird, that isn't a, a golden pheasant specific. That's to catch any kind of pheasants through there, and that's what their recommendation was and why they didn't make a specific They're golden on their letter. Significantly smaller than ring neck pheasants, correct? Right. I, I yeah, the golden pheasants are about a third the size. Silver pheasants are a little bit bigger than the goldens, but still smaller than a ring neck. I don't want to contest this. This isn't, shouldn't be a he said, she said. Uh, 
I don't have, I have Kevin McGee's um, memo, which he wrote yesterday, and that you have, and I have attended all the, uh, the relevant uh, commission meetings, but I, for one, don't remember any generalizations. Uh, and I'll mention that later in another uh, respect. So I, I really was, and this several months has been bewildering to someone who doesn't participate, and I think Mr. Plamond's going to reference a couple of these things in a minute or so. I, I would suggest some clarification in that matter, because it, I do not recall this generalization. So it was I, always golden pheasants, golden pheasants, golden pheasants, now it's pheasants, and if you were to approve that application, that opens a barn door. If, fact, if you were to. Right. If, I understand. So and, just and, and specificity if, if, if would be. If we were to, uh, yeah. we would amend the motion to specifically yeah. but just. So specificity would be very helpful throughout. Thank you for bringing that up. Would anyone like to speak? The, to, sorry. The 15 birds, though, that have been in question included the silver pheasants that were seen by the Agricultural Commission on there. You know, it's, I'm not right. so, I'm not playing a game right. of what, asking what, what for I'm, goldens because they're small and trying to sneak no, what, silvers what in. What I'm suggesting is that if, in fact, uh, we were to approve this, the approval would be for the golden and silver. That it would not allow for the keeping of, say, ringneck pheasants, which are significantly larger, as you've indicated, and noisier. If I'm not yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I've you know, been there, done it, not. <clears throat> don't need to go back, but I would like the, uh, you know, the silver pheasants. Okay, well, we'll they are part have of some clarification on that then. Um, any other questions from commissioners before I open it to the audience? Would anyone like to speak in favor of this application? Would anyone like to speak against this application? Please step forward, state your name and address. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Edward Flamond. I live at 25 Brookside Drive. <clears throat> My property abuts Mr. Goodman's. I know you've all seen me before. We've been sort of over this a couple of times already. I do have a prepared statement that I will read, but I would like to point out that the Agricultural Commission is only concerned with husbandry practices. They aren't concerned with the things that affect why I'm here concerning property values, the community of the neighborhood, blight. And so I know from talking to Mr. McGee that they were not interested in talking to me to address those issues. They were only concerned with husbandry practices. So when they recommend that he's able to keep these additional birds, that's all they're looking at. They're not looking at my property, they're not looking at the community, they're not looking at any of those things. So I just wanted to preface my, my statement with that. Uh, but anyway, um, my wife and I are here tonight to express our opposition to any additional special permit to double the number of pheasants currently granted by a previous special permit at 86 Middle Road. Our concerns and objections remain the same. Property values, neighboring property blight, and water runoff into the Guilford Lakes. These items haven't changed, and we don't believe that anything else on Mr. Goodman's property has changed, warranting the approval of additional birds. Also, there is no currently no scheduled or structured inspection process in place to ensure that the quantity of birds and site conditions will be held within the limitations of the special permit. We feel that this is a, 
this is very important for a number of reasons. Mr. Goodman has not demonstrated over the years much concern for zoning regulations and because we live in such a tight community of small lots that whatever one person does that is not in compliance affects all of us. In October of 2018, Mr. Goodman told the P&Z that he and his daughter are, and I quote, enamored with golden pheasants, they, that they love having them as pets. He stated that the breeding them was difficult and clearly not something he wanted to do. According to a State of Connecticut Department of Agriculture report dated January 3rd, 2019, the stated purpose of the pheasants, and this is in parentheses, is for breeding and showing purposes. The pheasants that are not kept for breeding are to be sold. At the time of the inspection, there were 21 birds according to the report more than the special permit allows. I'm not sure about the zoning board, but I think we were all led to believe that these animals were pets. In my vision of a pet, you don't breed pets and then sell the ones you aren't using anymore. I believe that the original premise of Mr. Philip Johnson's recommendations was based on Mr. Goodman's attachment to these birds as pets and their life expectancy of about 10 years. Mr. Goodman's new site plan submitted with his application does not show dimensions, either of structures or from structures to neighboring properties, buildings, or streets. I feel that an application regarding the raising, breeding, and selling of this number of birds along with eight accessory structures. Water drainage and wetlands issues could only be given serious consideration if the site map was prepared by a certified professional. The site map should show all the dimensions of buildings, property lines, building setbacks, elevations, wetlands, and water courses. As in Mr. Goodman's previous application, this requirement was waived, but we strongly urge that the commission not to waive this requirement. We feel that an accurate site map would also benefit Mr. Goodman in his endeavors. We also noticed on the new site plan that there's a large swale that drains water from below the upper aviaries and eventually into a stream with year-round water with um, year-round running water along our property line and then into the storm sewer which empties into the Guilford Lakes. Also noted from our property, there currently appears to be standing water in this swale. This swale may actually be channeling water from around the aviaries, dumping it into our property. We noticed that this year in our backyard, which is adjacent to Mr. Goodman's, an increase in wet areas that have not been present before. Without a survey, no one can be sure that Mr. Goodman's swales are not dumping runoff into our backyard, contributing to our water issues. On a lighter note, my wife and I would love to have sheep and would like to have a special permit to have them on our property, but we don't but we haven't done that because we feel it's important to be good neighbors and it's inappropriate in our small Guilford Lakes community. Guilford Lakes has never been a farming community. It has always been a mixture of summer cottages and modest homes. It is a community of people who tend their gardens, swim in the lakes, and take leisurely strolls after dinner. Neighbors in the association take great pride in our community and its beautiful lakes, golf course, and the Timberlands. My wife and I love our community having lived here for 41 years and feel that our neighborhood is threatened by the blight of, of eight plastic tarped 
accessory buildings, a lean-to, rusting boat trailers, a rotting truck, and the commercialization of a third of an acre for raising pheasants. We urge you to not grant this spe additional special permit. And I do have a copy of that state report attached to the back of these. Do we have a site plan submitted for this? On the back of this application? No, it's not. Remarkable. It's the old one. Yeah, that's from before. From before, not for this application, from before. Right. Just the same property. Right? Yeah, the property itself hasn't changed. Right. Remember, Mr. Fulman, the house. There's some copies. What's this? What's the copies of the current? Copies. Uh, that? Those are copies of the current. That's copies of uh, Mr. Plumon's letter that he just oh, okay. wrote. Oh, you. you want to see this file now? And that's, that's what he just wrote. Oh, okay. This is the current. All right. Thank you for your comments. Mm -hmm. Would anyone else like to speak? My name is Herb Burstein. I live at 98 Lakeside Drive in the <clears throat> Lakes area. Uh, I don't live particularly close to the applicant. Um, but as for Mr. Flamon, I oppose the application because it creates a bad precedent in the Lakes area. I assume you're all familiar with the Lakes area and its history and the original 50-foot lots, which then got combined 100-foot frontage and et cetera, et cetera. They're, they've, they're fairly close together. I also believe that strict adherence to our zoning regulations, and in particular to applicable state law, is particularly important in the Lakes area because the houses are close together. Gentlemen, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, far from it. But I can read basic planning law, and I'm going to take you in another direction now. Try to bear with me. And if I sound confused, it's probably because I am. But um, I'm going to suggest to you what you have before you is a um, appeal, not a new application and that you can't consider an appeal because, as you suggested earlier in the preface to tonight's hearing, appeals belong in the Superior Court, not at the Planning and Zoning Commission. Try to bear with me, and I really am going to be pretty brief. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them, but probably not, won't do very well. My reading tells me that Connecticut courts appear to find what they call, in quotes, a certain finality is necessary to avoid repeated applications that consider the same subject. Otherwise, that people would be here meeting after meeting with the same application you just rejected, perhaps hoping that the composition on that night of the PNZ changed. I don't know what. There's this notion of a certain finality that they find. At the same time, the courts find that if either what they call material circumstances, and that's the confusing one, and I'll try to speak to that, have changed, or if a proposal has changed, then it's a new application and you have to consider it. The notion of a um, new application pretty clear. It could be a new site plan that responded to issues that you had last time out. That's clear cut. Uh, it could be a change in the zoning regulations since a special permit was offered. Or in this case, it might be because the applicant has purchased one of the two small vacant lots immediately to the west of his uh, uh, property. That would have changed, clear cut. 
Um, material circumstances is a little more difficult. Um, Can I interrupt you for just a Please. Um, so have we determined if this is, this is not an appeal for the prior approval? This is a new application, is that correct? That was my understanding when I put in the application. I, in the back of my head, I was kind of hoping for just an amendment to that, and I was told that this is the whole process of another special permit seeking the additional 15 birds that is in no way tied to the first. And we're more than six months after the first application? Yes. Yeah. There is no time limit associated with this. I, um, I can't explain to you tonight why you have not encountered this before. That's beyond me. This is the second PNZ and hopefully the last PNZ commission meeting I ever attend. But I can tell you that the notion is there and the courts call this a prior application rule. And I'll submit excerpts from two cases for the record. First case is what I believe may be the leading case, it's Connecticut, 1953, I was nine years old, Connecticut Supreme Court case that I believe may have advanced the notion. And the second excerpt and um, reference, associated reference, would be to a 2009 case suggesting that this notion had, continues to have currency and that's a superior court case. In other words, you don't have to go all the way up the chain anymore. It appears to me it's well said a lot. But let me continue. I was going to try to be brief. I said a new proposal would um, be fairly clear. Uh, I've outlined what a change in material circumstances might be. That is a change in the zoning regulations, that would be a material change. Um, here, nothing's changed other than 15 pheasants being removed from the applicant's property. And in answer to Mr. Mar I believe it was Mr. Markey's question, they haven't been moved very far. They've been moved to 58 Windfall Lane in Guilford, which is property of the applicant's ex-wife. I don't know that because I've hired a private detective. I know that because I've attended agriculture commission meetings um, <clears throat> over the last few months. And the applicant has introduced the blood test results which I will share uh, for the record, that indicate that at the time, I believe it was in early January, 15 were housed at 58 Windfall Lane. I'm getting concurrence from the applicant. Let me address one minor matter that has to do with blood tests. The applicant has told you that he's been a good guy. He's done everything he told him to do. Well, he's kind of expected to do that. <clears throat> Blood tests, in Connecticut at least, as I understand it, have a very specific purpose and a very specific time frame. In other words, if you want to, there's nothing permanent about this, because obviously infectious conditions change. If you want to display your birds for show, if you want to sell your birds, you have to have a current, which is a annual, one year, certified blood test, uh, state bl blood test, which then you present to the county fair, whatever, whatever. So, the applicant hasn't 
done anything that is unusual to demonstrate that he is a extremely good citizen. He's merely complied with your um, special permit and with applicable state law, as one hopes one, one would. Um, in November, as I said, I'll submit those for the record. And they were introduced by the applicant at a recent Agricultural Commission meeting, um, as was the state report that Mr. Flamon mentioned, the citing 21 pheasants on site. We have attempted, I'll stop for a minute, but I want to share this. We have, I have spoken to the inspector and I have asked the inspector whether it was simply a typo error, possible. Whether he took a physical count, he was to get back to me. I think I spoke to him uh, before I went away, so it would have been uh, as recently as March uh, 12th, uh, 11th. And he, no, it was earlier than that, a couple of days earlier. He was going to get back to me to clarify that. He does a lot of these, and he never did. I invite the applicant to clarify that if he wants to, if that's permissible at this point. We're here to get the whole facts. Pardon me? We're here to get everything out in the open so we're all I'm trying understanding my best, everything. And I'm, I'm trying to indicate to you what I, what I don't know. Okay. I'm not, I'm not. You're saying that when they were doing the best husbandry Mr. Mr. Uh, did you share the reports for the record? Most of the, the report that Mr. Flamont shared for the record references 21 pheasants. And that's what I tried to seek clarification about. Did he mean 1131 typo? I make typos, I, I don't know. That evaluation was done at the same time that the blood tests were taken, and the blood tests clearly I, showed that 16 of the birds were at my address and 15 I, were. I, 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 that's the paper. I, that may very well be. As I said, I tried to secure a clarification. If I had, I never would have mentioned it. I could not. You have it before you, and I invite anyone else to try to clarify it. I uh, hope this is my last appearance here. I mean, I'm really getting the end here. In November 2018, you decided, as Ms. Lamont indicated, all of the things equal as zoning regulations permitted 16 golden pheasants on the property. We reminded you in that case, you had to be guided by your regulations because you were acting in what courts call administrative capacity. We asked you to consider slope, which is extreme, impact on Mr. Vermont's property values, all relevant to the regulations. Evidently, you didn't think those factors were significant enough in this case. And you granted the, uh, <clears throat> you followed what the regulations also advanced, the per acre allocated, per acre rule. They recall that. I do. You've got a lot before you, so you may not. You said a third of the third of a third of an acre, a third of the max, a third of the one acre. Max, next. Um, we just agreed, but we accepted your judgment as with a court. They're not going to question judgment, they're going to question law. So we moved on. Gentlemen, here, as Mr. Lamont indicated, nothing's changed. Regulations the same, site's the same, site plan's the same, really, as finally approved with Aaron. And Mr. Lamont's house hasn't moved, so eight feet is closest to the property line. Nothing's changed, and I try to suggest to you, or at least my understanding of the law, if nothing's changed, it's an appeal, it's not new. Tonight, the applicant told you he's done everything he asked for. He's entitled to more. Uh, 
what I'm not sure has been emphasized, and this was not tried to, he did not have the opportunity to um, attend the relevant agriculture committee meeting, is that before the resolution, their resolution was adopted, one of the members very explicitly um, advanced the notion, this husbandry notion. Now, the minutes of the meeting do not, in my opinion, address that at all. Mr. McGee's memo that you have before you could, if you knew the background, begin to address that. I'm going to submit for the record a March 5th letter that I addressed to the Agricultural Committee Chairman and copy CC to Mr. McGee asking that they clarify that and that they review if necessary um, Mr. McGee's uh, recorded uh, material. He seemed to have a hand recorder at the meeting. Uh, I have not heard from them, but from my perspective, it was very, very, this notion of husbandry and the ability to versus the zoning regulations was very clear. Clear distinction. And I would hope there would be no misunderstanding uh, in that regard. Um, as I said, uh, I think what you have before you is an appeal, uh, which could have been advanced to the Superior Court if the applicant had acted within the prescribed 15-day window. He didn't. I think it's over as far as TMZ is concerned, unless things change. I think we hope, I hope, Mr. Clement hopes that you don't even consider seriously approving this application. And I suggest it might not, given your process, it perhaps should not, had you been aware of this prior application rule, even appeared on tonight's agenda since you approved its appearance at your last meeting. You acted upon it. You said we will consider it. So. Given the hearing, I can assume no one, I can assume no one has ever told you about the prior application rule. I can understand that at first blush, it may be confusing, it was to me. I would really encourage you to consult with your on-call land use attorney. If you're confused by the matter, and you have plenty of reason to doubt anything I suggest to you today. I, um, in any case, I would really ask that you don't approve this application tonight and place Mr. Flamon in the position that his only alternative is to consider spending ten to $12,000 to lodge an appeal because I really think that this matter is going to be clear cut. Now, it's taken far more time. I could have read this at home in about four minutes. <laughs> And didn't work out that way. I Thank apologize. Sorry? Yeah, I, I, if you have any appreciate. questions, please. If you have no. any questions after I sit down, call me back. Otherwise, thank you for your patience. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? Hold on, yes. I'm not on the nature of the application. Um, Mr. Burstein raised these questions with uh, Aaron and I a few weeks ago as well. Um, it was our interpretation initially in, uh, in considering Mr. Goodman's uh, application that what he was asking for was an amendment to one of the conditions of the previous approval. We did not consider it to be a new application for a new special permit, nor did we consider it to be an appeal of his previous approval, which this commission granted. We took it to be a request to uh, reconsider one of the conditions of approval. Um, the commission has done that from time to time with respect to other applications, considered uh, revisions to previous 
plan approval, site plan, or special permit, or otherwise. And that's the way we interpreted this application. Um, as you know, the commission can't refuse to receive an application regardless of what kind of condition or merit it might have. Um, if you are of a mind to uh, uh, review the uh, whether or not this is a proper application, um, I think the next step for you to take would be to request um, town council to review the, the matter. Um, I, I think uh, Aaron and not you probably we probably exhausted our ability to analyze the legal issues although there does appear to be a six-month uh, time time limit at least with respect to certain types of applications uh, which has to expire before you can resubmit the same application again um, so uh, we did discover that but I think prop most most properly if you're uncertain uh, would be to ask town council to uh, review that question how long ago was the original submission of the application and um, how, much, how much time has gone since the application for the revision uh, I think we 10th, yeah it was always February 27th I think it was received so it, it exceeds the um, I don't know about you guys, but uh, I'd like to get some clarification on some questions. So I'm, I'm personally, I'm not in favor of waiving the second public hearing on this. No, right. I, I'd like to get no, it right. Definitely not. Um, I did have one other question, and George, I don't know if you can answer this, but uh, Article 30, which regulates our agriculture, um, do you have any insights on where that zone code's based from? The Ag, the Ag Commission uh, drafted that uh, pretty much, I've forgotten the date, but several years ago. It's, it's their their proposal to the Planning and Zoning Commission, essentially. Okay. It's thank not you. something that we have any special expertise in. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, we had some reference of a uh, memo Kevin had. Yeah. Do we have the memo from Kevin? Is there a memo from Kevin? That's the oh. Pete Perkins. It's on know. Kevin's There's letterhead. There's no special. There's not a second. There's no memo from Kevin. Okay. Okay. It's on Kevin's letterhead. Okay. And that was from the original? Mm -hmm. No, that's from Peter Perkins. No, the circumstances that change from the previous situation to the current situation is that the Ag Commission, right. who recommended the 15 birds in the first case, first place, I believe, yes. has now said that thir whatever, 30 birds are okay, at least from their somewhat narrow, narrow point of view. So on the basis of that, I think the applicant felt that it would be appropriate to seek seek an amendment to the condition of approval, which was originally based on the Agricultural Commission's recommendation, if I understand it correctly. So that's why that, those are the circumstances that changed from the previous approval to where we are today. And Phil, just to clarify, or, um, Scott, Section um, 273-246, um, states that the Planning and Zoning Commission shall refer any special permit application pursuant to this section to the Town of Guilford Ag Commission for their advice and comment. The Ag Commission shall, uh, shall serve as a resource concerning agricultural management, especially the keeping of animals. The Agricultural Commission shall aid the Zoning Enforcement Officer by reviewing agricultural operations <coughs> and making suggestions in the event of a complaint. The Agricultural Commission shall analyze recurring issues and advise citizens who are interested in keeping animals on their property. So they do serve an advisory role mm -hmm. to the Commission. All right, I think we, uh, oh, I'm just going to, so would anyone else like to speak against? I'd like to really understand what I'm hearing. You want me to approach the mic again? That would be good, just so it can be captured by Peter. <coughs> Has to speak up, uh, Mr. Flamon. I, I understand sitting there, it is difficult to listen, uh, to hear, rather. Um, clarification. I thought I heard the town planner suggest that a circumstance had changed. Now, I only belabor this because I, I am very concerned about not getting an opinion, not receiving an appropriate opinion 
which I will reiterate, I think can only come from what I understand, a person I understand to be an accomplished land use lawyer, and that's your on-call attorney, not your town attorney. Right. Chuck. 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 <laughs> but a clarification. Did I hear the town planner suggest that a circumstance had changed? I believe that those were his words. Is that correct or incorrect? The, the, the town planner isn't the app. I mean, I, I heard that as well, but rest assured that when we consult with Chuck, yeah. the specific question as to whether this is a modification of the prior application yeah. or a new application, right. we will have absolute clarity on that. But I would point out that in framing it, framing the request, since I, I assume it's going to be staff who frames it, and I hate to say this, but you know, you often get what you ask for. Well, <laughs> if you don't, my, I, I, the point I will work I'm with making, staff. That the point I'm making is the very clear distinction between the initial Ag Commission proposal, which simply looked at the regulations and said it's a third of an acre, a third of the birds. And this one, which says you can accommodate them due to, if you really wanted to, absent any zoning consideration. Now, is that a change of circumstances? Well, one permitted answer, one's own question. No, come on. No. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Again, as I said, yeah. we're going to fight to get everything. I would appreciate right. it. Thank you very much. And, uh, Rest assured, we take it very seriously. This is because there's a possibility that this this is being labeled as an amendment to the first special permit. We we want clarification from town council uh, on the nature of the application as to whether or not it's a separate application, whether it's an amendment to the original, and the permissibility of those different possibilities. So, you know, just to make okay. sure that it's yep. clear out there, what I was told when I went in to Aaron to go through the, you know, after I got the recommend, you know, the, the thumbs up from the Agricultural Commission, um, Aaron explained to me that there is no way to do an amendment on that original special permit, that this was a whole another special permit process separate and apart from the original one, that it would in no way threaten the first permit, and that it was simply a special permit for 15 additional birds. For the original application, right? No. Well, well then, yeah, yes. additional, above okay. and beyond well, the again, original one, but... I, there might not be a perfect process, but we're going to try and get to a, the right solution. Question. So, at what point do we consider? You know, you have so many animals. Where it should be a farm zone farming? You know, is it 50 animals? What type of animals do you require to be considered a farm far, uh, zone for we farming? Non-commercial farms. Non-commercial farms. Residential zones. Mm -hmm. So do the regulations distinguish between a commercial versus a non-commercial. How, how many animals are you allowed, or the particular it varies type? Of, on the type of animal well, per I acre. Think it's cool for or for chickens? It's 15 in there. And this would be... Right now I think we're coming to the point where, I mean, is it a farm? Is it not a farm? Is it a third of an acre? No, it's, a, you know, it's a residential property maintaining the birds. Yeah, it's an R3 property. Yeah. Poultry. Poultry. chickens. They're, they're distinguished Thank you. in the regulations. I think the problem, here, the problem here lies with this, a basic fact. <coughs> the Agricultural Commission said he's doing a fantastic job according to this letter. Well, that's fine. But on the other hand, the people that live in that neighborhood, when we had our last meeting, showed up an enormous amount of people. So we need a second meeting for that. We have to consider, one of the most important things we have to consider 
It's the people living in the neighborhood. What they want, what did, what did, how do they feel? Do they feel they're being downgraded by having more birds again? This is why we put a limit on it in the first place. Now we're coming in and saying, well, agriculture's department said they did a fantastic job, so why not let them have 30? Well, why not let them have 60? I mean, the neighborhood, are the, pe the people we have to consider is the people that are living in this neighborhood. We need to hear their side of the story again, and then we make our decisions. We make our decisions on what the neighborhood wants, not what the agriculture department wants. Anyone else like to speak in opposition to the application? Would someone like to make a motion to continue I, to? I will make a motion to continue to April 3rd. Second. Discussion? Second. A second, second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. All right. You do want the town council to weigh in on the appropriateness yes. yeah. of we'll, this Why don't um, you and I work on how we want to structure the question? Um, okay. Uh, we have anything to deliberate there? I don't think so. No, because we did the uh, in approval of the revised agenda. So moved. Second. Anyone second? All in favor? Aye. Um, subdivision C site plan, Yale New Haven Hospital, Inc., 125 Goose Lane, 111 Goose Lane, Map 75, Lot 13, Zone C2. Site plan modification for installation of electrical cabinets below grade, duct banks, and existing fire land reconstruction. We're going to receive and request that we take action. Thanks for coming. Thank you. We'll be, we'll be quicker. Okay. <laughs> Um, my name is Susan Hayes. I'm with Updike Kelly and Spellacy, um, located in Hartford, Connecticut. I have Chuck Croce here with me from Ty and Bond, who's just going to walk you through the, the, the few site plan modifications that we have. We have Heather Eastman in the back, um, who's with Yale New Haven Hospital, if there's any specific questions that he can answer. So she can answer, sorry. So I'm just going to just sit down, shut up, and have Chuck get up here and, and Fire talk. Away. Good evening. As Susie says, my name is Chuck Croce, a professional engineer with Ty and Bond from Middletown, Connecticut. And I'm going to go through the exterior site improvements. Basically, the existing building at 111 Goose Lane, in the back of the building, there are some uh, electrical upgrades. There's two new switches, which are electrical uh, enclosures on concrete pads. Uh, there's an emergency switch and a primary switch, and that ties in for the existing transformer. So the existing transformer ties into the primary switch, and the existing generator ties into the emergency switch, and that's through uh, underground conduit. There's also a, an existing uh, process aggregate walkway that comes out of the doorway right here and goes to the parking lot. That's a means of egress walkway, and to meet current code, it has to be paved. So we're just paving that existing walkway with bituminous. Um, there's also replacement of existing concrete walk at this building entrance and the addition of a trench drain. And then installing the electrical switch here in conduit, the existing reinforced turf fire lane, which exists today, gets disturbed and we are replacing that with just reinforced turf again. And that's really the extent of what the site work is in the back of the building. And which is shown in the plans. Have you been to Wetlands yet? Yes, we were there last week. Okay. Is that fine with it all? Uh, yeah, approved. yeah, they approved. They, they approved. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Memos or anything? Got one from Kevin. Shoot. This one's dated today from Kevin McGee, environmental planner. Reason Yale New Haven Hospital 125 Goose Lane, Map Guilford, Connecticut, Map 75, Lot 13. Yale New Haven Hospital is working on improvements to the east side of the building that includes pedestrian access ramp, reconstruction of a grass creek fire lane, installation of electrical cabinets, and a below grade duct bank. The proposed work has minimal increase in impervious surface area which will be treated by infiltration and sheet flow across the lawn. 
The plans for the project have sedimentation and erosion control procedures that are in compliance with 273-97B, subsection 6 of the zoning regulations. Silt fencing has been installed around the construction area. The Guilford Inland Wetlands at its March 13, 2019 meeting approved and after the fact regulate, regulated activity for the installation of electrical cabinets below grade duct banks, existing fire lane reconstruction within a hundred feet jurisdictional review zone. In order to make sure that the natural resources are protected, I recommend the following condition of approval. The town of Guilford zoning enforcement officer should be notified to inspect the sedimentation and erosion control measures. That condition's fine? That's fine. Great. Aaron, you good with that too? Thank you. Um, I did have one other question in, uh, in regards to doing reconstruction of the fire, of existing fire lane. Did you have to go through the fire department again to make sure that it's going to be in compliance? Yeah, they've been involved in the process okay. and it's basically the same exact route. We just put it yeah, I just want to make sure that nothing changed between the last time it was built and now and yeah. make sure that what we're putting in now is going to still be good for today's code. Yeah, okay. it was designed to handle the weight of a fire truck. Great. Any other questions from commissioners? Yeah. Any questions from the audience? This is not I know, I just throw it out. It seems perfectly <laughs> logical. <laughs> um, sure. uh, I'd like to make a motion. Please. Uh, voted that the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission approve a revision to the, a site plan for Yale New Haven Hospital at 125 Goose Lane, Map 75, Lot 13, as shown on application dated February 19th, 2019 and, quote, Yale New Haven Health Surgery Center, unquote, dated February 19th, 2019, six sheets prepared by T and Bond. Uh, this application is approved based upon the finding that it conforms with the zoning code. I'll second. Could you add Kevin's? Oh, I'm sorry. Condition? This application appro uh, approved following condition. conditions. Number one, um, Kevin's condition concerning the zoning enforcement officer should be notified to inspect and sedimentation control <coughs> measures. Um, this application is approved based upon the finding that conforms to zoning code. Second. Discussion? I think it's great. It's no. pretty straightforward. Okay. Call the vote. All in favor? Aye. Very good. Enjoy. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's my understanding, George, that the town of Guilford bus yard is... Okay. And, uh, we he can explain that, what's going on. Okay. <laughs> can I use his easel? No. Um, so we've intentionally misled you with the site plan there. Um, I wasn't aware of the 50-foot setback from the, uh, from the road in, when, when I suggested the placement where you see it indicated on the site plan. I was just made aware of it. And there is sufficient room to move it back to comply with that. Uh, up further against the front of the trailer. Henry? Yes, my name is Henry. Okay. Oh, my name I, is Henry Moore. I just wanted to. From Goshen. Which is our. Is this our map? No, no. Here. Yeah, that map's a different application. Thank you. It's to scale, but it's too close to the front property line, so it, it, uh, they need to maintain a 50-foot setback from the front property line. Um, so there are a couple options. I think, right, Henry? You yeah, there's plenty of room. If, if, if when it's moved, uh, placed uh, right up against the front of the trailer, meaning the, the front that's facing Hubbard Road, uh, if, if there's still not sufficient setback, we can put it at the other end of the trailer. But that... The reason I'm picking where it is now is because it will interfere with uh, the backing in of a couple of buses because of the overhang. I mean, I'll do it if, if it doesn't comply where I've suggested to put it now. Um, would you be okay with bringing us a revised map at the next meeting? Just so we're not categorically making an approval. Oh, well, without, yeah. Without kind of knowing where it is? Sure, yeah. Does that make sense? Um, All right. Yeah. Thank you. I waited here. I know. I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. I'll see you then. Thank you very much. Uh.
Uh, but that, 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 that takes care of that one. So we'll, we will table that till the April 3rd meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Uh, withdrawn application for Alan D'Antonio. That puts an end to that for now. Uh, special applications, applications to be received, special permit. Judith Keogh, 1700 Little Meadow Road, map 97, lot 31, R, zone R8, special permit to convert existing detached accessory apartment into a home office set and receive public hearing for April 17, 2019. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Connecticut Water Company, 478 Long Hill Road, map 79, lot 16, zone R5, special permit and site plan to allow construction of new above grade water pump station set and received for April 17th, 2019. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Right, thank you. Other mandatory referral. The Board of Selectmen has recommended to the Planning and Zoning Commission under CGS 8-24 upgrades to the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems at Cox Elementary School, the replacement of windows, doors, blinds at Melissa Jones School, as well as various road construction projects. Resolve the Planning and Zoning Commission of the Town of Guilford approves the following projects pursuant to 8-24 of the General Statutes. Upgrades of heating, ventilation, air conditioning systems at Cox Elementary School, and the replacement of windows, doors, blinds at Melissa Jones School. Various road construction projects presents at March 20, 2019, Planning and Zoning. Um, Do we have the road projects? No, we don't know what they are. I've always wondered why they send this to us for kind of a category. Why, why bond Council requires that the Planning and Zoning These are going to be on. bond issues on the referendum. Okay. So would we make a motion? You would adopt a resolution that's, we make a that's, motion that's, adopt that's a resolution. printed there. We got a uh, letter here, too, from the first selectman. From the first selectman. Well, in accordance with Connecticut General Statutes 8-24, I am forwarding the following request to you for your consideration at your March 20th, 2019 meeting. Mandatory referral, the Board of Selectmen has recommended that to the Planning and Zoning Commission under Connecticut General Statutes 8-24, upgrades to the heating and ventilation and air conditioning systems at A.W. Cox Elementary School, the replacement of doors and blinds at Melissa Jones Elementary School as well as well as various road construction, pro reconstruction projects. Thanks for your consideration, Matt Hoey, for a selectman. Um, would someone like to make a motion to approve the resolution? Make a motion. Someone like to second it? Second. Discussion? All in favor of the approval of the resolution? Very good. Uh, we have correspondence, Robert Mangino, request for the interpretation of zoning practice regarding sewage disposal systems serving commercial zones located in residential zones. He is here too. Good evening. Good evening. For the record, my name is Robert Mangino. I'm an architect. I was here at the um, last uh, month in regards to a particular project, which is a split zone property. After discussing with the staff and any any property in Guilford, and my correspondence and reflects to any property where you have a split zone, where you have a commercial zone line, and another partial portion of the lot is a residential. Is the applicant or any owner able to use residential land for the septic system for the commercial aspect of the project? You have a commercial zone, commercial building, I like to put, we call it that septic system in the residential zone. It's generally been understood we, we wouldn't do that, but clarification, is, in the regular, is there something in the regulation that says we can't do it, or do we have the opportunity to use that residential land for commercial septic system? Add to that a little bit. Um, our practice in the past has been a little bit inconsistent in this regard. Um, some, we have from time to time said that we don't allow septic systems from commercial developments in residential zones. Um, and other times uh, we have allowed septic systems from commercial development to be placed in the residential zone adjacent to the commercial property. Uh, there's nothing in the code, in our zoning code, that says anything about that subject. Uh, clearly above ground 
commercial facilities, parking areas, for example, cannot go into the residential zone. Um, and again, to, to repeat, my, our practice has been a little bit inconsistent. We have, for example, Aaron discovered in doing a little research this afternoon that at 800 Boston Post Road, the uh, uh, Patriot Medical Center, I believe it's called, we did allow a substantial septic system there to go into a residential zone at the rear of the property. Um, so Mr. Bangino is seeking further clarification on that subject. Um, you do have a memo from Dennis uh, that talks about this as well. Um, you know, obviously we can't say yes, but there appears to be precedent, and it would seem to me that that would be a, a low-intensity utilization of the property. You know, well, I, you know, not the attorney, and there's no application before us. I would look favorably on that type of use, but and we've got precedent for having done such. Again, I can if I can just refer to my application that I when I spoke to staff that if we could then because we're here a table on my zone line application mm -hmm. that if i can use that residential land for the septic then I, we would simply withdraw our ts application for zone change because i can use the full ts zone and put my commercial system so in essence instead of having a 30 foot buffer strip the adjacent owners have basically a 120 foot buffer strip the residential land stays as residential there's no parking, as we said, we can't do it, but at least we can put the septic on that area. So we have a, a buffer strip um, of natural, of, of, of unbuildable, but then the TS zone, we can build TS without taking any of that land away for septic. As it's not like this is an application, so. No, it's just a request to, for clarification of what, of our practice, just to make sure. I think, uh, I don't think, Mr. Mangino or his client wants to make an application for a site plan approval with the septic system showing in the residential zone um, if it's going to be the commission's determination that no you can't do that and so we were wanted to get further reassurance on this subject as I mentioned we don't have a consistent practice with doing this um, and that's why we're before you today I do have a question. Uh, have you, there is a memo that we've gotten from Dennis Johnson. Mm -hmm. Have you seen this memo? I haven't seen it. No. Okay. Um, the one thing that he mentioned, he's basically confirming that there isn't uh, technical restrictions on this. Um, but one point that he does make is the discharge of toxic chemicals or industrial wastewater into septic systems is not permitted. Um, are you fine with that stipulation? No toxic. No, if in theory this was too. No, it'd be, it'd be like a clean septic system, no toxic waste. I just want to make you aware of this. That rule would apply regardless of what that's zone. It, what zone? Okay, that's based on health code. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Right. And in addition, just to clarify, as far as my, I kind of look at it, that zoning-wise, we look at structures above grade. When we typically don't, there are health code setbacks for property lines and things like that for septic systems, but we do not have any zoning setbacks. Septic system. My inclination would have a very strong chance of being approved, but obviously, you know, we, until we have an application before us, we can't technically approve it. But that's my feeling, and you're welcome to ask the other commissioners how yeah, that. Again, only because again, I understand. No, no, with, with the zone change, because again, if it looks like it's a, it's a way to go, then it's obvious we can submit well, something using our land and without going for a zone change and submit an application using TS for TS construction and R for basically septic design. And then uh, at that point in time, with the system like I am, we would simply withdraw our zone change uh, modification because now we can use the residential for the septic. I think it probably has a significantly higher chance of approval than the zone change. Right, no, uh, and that was my sense but with my client, that it works for every place we have. A uh, hundred foot buffer strip instead of that thirty foot, and my sense is, you know, we want to be neighborly, mm -hmm. and um, may, if we get that interpretation, we can develop buildings on the TSO. The TS is always construction wise. Yeah. So my take is, as long as the septic comes into all the health code and sit. I mean, we, line, we, we were looking lines. for ways to, to allow you to utilize the property right. more so fully, we and this and seems like after a... After we left, it, to me, my sense was that uh, we have a way to make the thing work, and I talked to my client, Jim Yes, we'd like to do something of substance, and 
and, and be, a, be a good neighbor and uh, leave the residential alone so we have a nice buffer area. And again, we'll meet with Dennis Johnson, have an energy and septic system, which he will approve based upon the setbacks, et cetera. So um, you still have the oversight and the building will just conform to TS requirements. You know, I've been here the last meeting in charge. I think that will pretty much mitigate no, yeah, because we're, good. we're not asking vision that doesn't exist now. Correct. Okay, we're good with the correspondence? Yeah. Yeah. I'm fine with that, and uh, thank you, George, for talking to uh, Charlie about the application. Um, had anyone had a chance to review the minutes? I did. I one. You weren't here, right? So I wasn't here either, but I know the are you Richard Wallace, because uh, it says Chairman Bill Johnson called the meeting to order. I talked to uh, Lisa about that this morning. Okay, so that's been corrected. Okay. I would like to make a motion to approve the minutes as corrected. I would make that motion. Second. Okay. All in favor? Fine. We can never that wasn't here. Okay. Uh, with, we have to, we have any bills? No. Or no? We paid the, we okay. paid the courier last month. Second. Okay, then. Uh, would someone like to make a motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, we, have a, we have one step. Now you reject the motion. Got it. Please note, Alan Brown rejected a motion. We prefer to so keep the meeting open. He wants to stay here tonight? He is lost by a whole vote. Yeah. We're all going uh, Thank Saturday. you.